Okay, another rotational dynamics problem. This one is just a, a simple yo-yo problem, a problem that you might deal with if you like playing with the yo. So you have a yo-yo, and the yo-yo can be treated like a solid cylinder rotating about its symmetry axis. That is not at all what I anticipated. Let's just take off that. A solid cylinder rotate about symmetry axis. First things first, a solid cylinder rotate about symmetry axis is going to tell me the moment of inertia. And the moment of inertia for a solid cylinder about symmetry axis is equal to one half mass of the cylinder multiplied by the raise of the cylinder squared. So I have that right off the bat. When the yo-yo leaves the person's hand, the string is wound up so it unwinds at a radius of about nine-tenths of the yo-yo's full radius. So I'm going to say, for the beginning part, the radius for the string is equal to nine-tenths the radius. At the end, you've unwrapped most of it and you're about one-fifth, so I'm going to end with raise the string initial final is equal to radius divided by 5. Now my two questions are what is is the acceleration when the yo-yo leaves a person's hand that is when it's unwinding at 9 tenths radius and what's the acceleration when it nears the bottom when it's unwinding at 1 fifth the radius. As with all of our problems I start with the figure so here I've drawn the yo-yo and I've got the force of tension from the string pulling up the force of gravity going down. Now I look at this and I have to ask myself what's, what physics will allow me to solve this? And you might be thinking, hey, maybe I should do this with kinetic energy and potential energy. Or you might be thinking, hey, maybe I should do this with forces and torques. Well, as I look at this, because I'm looking for acceleration and acceleration is not part of energy, I am likely to do it with the forces and torques. So my concept here is going to be using my Newton's second law, both the linear form and the rotational form. So with that concept, use both linear and rotational forms of Newton's second law, then my equations are going to be some of the force vectors is equal to mass times acceleration vector, some of the torque vectors is equal to I alpha, and then I'm going to need to make an equation to relate the angular acceleration of this yo-yo with the angular velocity or with the linear acceleration. Now, if we look at this, the acceleration is going to be the acceleration going down. Now, if this is accelerating going down, that's the minus y direction, the rotation is going to be increasing in a clockwise direction, which is negative. So a negative acceleration correlates with a negative angular acceleration. We know that the acceleration on the edge of a circle relates to the angular acceleration with the equation acceleration tangential is equal to the angular acceleration multiplied by the radius. Well, I have to determine, number one, what's the radius? The radius is the radius of the end of the circle where it is, in this case, the string is going off, so that would be the radius of the string. So I need to put radius of the string there. Remember, negative correlated with negative, so that's why these are left with positive signs on both sides, because negative acceleration tangential gives a negative alpha, or vice versa. Now I can do my problem, so let's get to work. So first I will start with the, the linear form. Some of the forces in the y direction 
is equal to mass times acceleration in the y direction. Why did I choose the y direction? Because my forces are both in the y direction. So substituting in, force tension is parallel to y, so that's positive. Force of gravity is anti-parallel to y, so that's negative. And I'm going to put mg for the force of gravity, just makes my life simpler, is equal to mass times the acceleration in the y direction. Now the acceleration tangential is going to be the same as the acceleration in the y direction, so I could have just put a y there. Angular acceleration, if you look at this, the angular acceleration is actually not about the x-axis, because about the x-axis would need rotation coming out and going in. Not about the y-axis, because that would also need out and going in. The rotation is going to be rotation like this, which is a negative rotation about the z-axis. So this alpha is actually alpha z. Okay, back to our equation. For Newton's second law, I got force tension minus mg is equal to may. I don't know ay, but I'm looking for it. I don't know the force of tension. Okay, so I, I can't finish it with that. I need to move on to a second option. What's my second option? Sum of the torques about the z-axis is equal to I times the angular acceleration about the z-axis. So looking at my torques about the z-axis, I have a torque that is created about, remember you always have to identify the point that you're summing the torques about, and I am going to sum the torques about the center of the circle. So I'm going to have some of the torques, the force tension, my radius comes out like this. Using the right hand rule, put your index finger going from the axis that I'm summing the torques about to where the force acts. So that's going to be going to the left. Orient your right hand so you can have your middle finger point in the direction of the force. And you're ending up with your thumb of your right hand is pointing into the screen. So that means I'm going to get a negative torque for RS force tension. Now, something to keep in mind, I didn't put here in my equations. I should have put torque equals R cross F. Remember, it's R cross F, not F cross R. You'd have the opposite direction if you did F cross R. And how do I find the magnitude of that torque? I use the right-hand rule to get the direction, and the magnitude is R perpendicular times the F. And there's a couple other forms I could have written. I could have written equals RF perpendicular, or I could have put equals RF times sine of the angle between the R and the F. Notice in this case, my R is perpendicular to F, so RS was R perpendicular. And furthermore, if I were to use the bottom form, R times F times sine of 90 degrees, sine of 90 degrees is 1. So I have this torque, and it's a negative, as we determined. And then I have the force of gravity, but that's acting at a perpendicular distance of 0. Right, because the force of act, gravity is acting right at the point where I'm summing the torques. So that's equal to I alpha Z. Well, now we make our substitutions. So I was looking for in this problem the acceleration of the yo-yo. So since I'm looking for acceleration, I'm going to take this equation, solve it for AZ. AZ, or not AZ, alpha Z. Wow. Alpha Z is equal to AY divided by RS. So I'm going to substitute that in here. I will also substitute in that the moment of inertia for a cylinder, so I said it could be treated like a solid cylinder, is one half mass times the total radius squared. And putting those two, two in, I'm going to have minus RS force tension equals one half m r squared times a y over r s. Well, this looks like it's pretty much done, right? I'm looking for a y, so let's just solve this for a y. Okay. 
Okay, when I divide by one half, that's going to put a 2 on top. I always like to put that number first. This my sign is from that. So I have RS times RS is RS squared. 4's tension over mass times radius squared. Well, now this has force tension in AY, and up here I had force tension in AY. So I will take this, because I wanted to find AY, I really should have solved that for force tension. It would have made more sense to solve this for force tension. Force tension is equal to minus AY times m r squared over r s 2 r s squared. That would have made more sense because then I put this force tension into my equation from Newton's second law. That equation was force tension is equal to or force tension minus m g is equal to m a y. So I will have minus a y times m r squared over 2 r s squared. So there's force of tension minus m g equals m a y. Now we can all see that we have m in all three terms. So I will instantly cancel that m. No need to carry that around. I have a y in the first term and a y in the last term, so I need to bring this over. So I'll add it to both sides, factor out the a y, and so actually, I assume you like me see a blank screen right now. I'm going to copy this onto the next page so I don't forget something. So here's what I had from the previous page. So doing the work I just outlined, I will have minus g equals ay times 1 plus r squared over 2 rs squared. Solving this for ay then, ay is equal to minus g divided by 1 plus r squared over 2 rs squared. Or probably more telling, minus g over 1 plus 1 half r over rs quantity squared. Now I had two conditions I was looking for. Condition one was acceleration y direction when rs is equal to 9 tenths r. Well, plugging that in, ay is equal to minus g divided by 1 plus 1 half of r over 9 tenths r quantity squared. Well, notice now that my r's are going to cancel. And I have nine, 1 over 9 tenths, which is 10 ninths, quantity squared. Ten squared is 100. 9 squared is 81. So to get that into numerical format, I would have... minus g over 1.617 or equals I typed 
something wrong on my six point zero five nine five meters per second squared minus sign. Of course, do I have that many significant digits? I have infinite significant digits is the the fact here if I was correct in nine tenths. Of course that nine tenths was an approximation, so I'm just going to approximate this to minus six point one meters per second squared. What does the minus sign mean? It means that it's going the opposite direction of my y-axis. My y-axis is up, so it means it's accelerating down. I would have guessed that. 6.1 meters per second squared, less than the acceleration would be if it was just in free fall. Now for B, I wanted AY when RS is equal to 1 fifth R. So doing the same thing, my AY is equal to minus G over 1 plus 1 half of R over 1 fifth R, quantity squared. Once again, the R's are going to cancel. 1 over 5, 1 over 1 over 5 is 5, 5 squared is 25, equals minus G over 1 plus 25 halves. Now, 25 halves is a pretty big number. That's 12 and a half, right? So 1 plus 12 and a half is 13 and a half, minus G. So calculating that out, I have my acceleration now. Is a much lower value. Now I'm thinking about this. I'm saying, does that make sense? I started with my force upward farther away from the axis. So I'm going to be making... A, a bigger torque with my tension, it, I might expect it to rotate faster. In the end, I have my string very close to the axis, a much smaller torque made by that string. So it's a lot more pulling up and a lot less torque. So it makes sense that the acceleration dropped. So there's my answer. Hope you enjoyed and learned something from doing this problems.